All right, welcome back. And let's continue with MP2. So at this point, um, you know, again, please don't proceed unless you finish the previous uh, two uh, test cases. So at this point, uh, my Git load, my Git preferences is working. Sorry, load preferences is working. That was our first test case. Uh, Git preferences and the preferences route are both working. So, so that's good. Um, and what we're gonna work on in this lesson is um, viewing this, this new activity that we're going to create in order to view information about a particular restaurant. So we have this list that we are showing to the user right now. And what we want to happen is we want to, uh, when they click on a restaurant, we want to bring up a screen, which in Android equates to an activity, with more details about that restaurant. Now, we've created that activity right here, and we marked it when we were going through saying we're going to come back and we're going to use this, you know, to display details about the restaurant. Uh, but right now it's empty. Um, and so the first thing we really need to figure out how to do, and this is not something where we expect you to mimic existing code, because that's actually not in the project yet, is launch this thing. Like, how do we actually get this to run? How do we actually switch between activities? This introduces this idea of what in Android is referred to as an intent. Um, an intent allows us to start the activity. We're going to create an intent. We're going to tell Android, I want to start this particular activity, and then that's what's going to initiate the, the, the change in activity, where there's, this, uh, there's a method called start activity that we can call, and we're going to pass it the intent that we create. Now, the question is, where should we do this, right? Where, where's a good place to do this? I'm going to propose that we put this over here on our main activity. Um, and I'm actually going to uh, uh, propose that we put it in this on click method that we haven't really done anything with. This is actually where it needs to be. Because um, what's going to happen is, you know, this is the method. I could put in some log in here. Uh, you could do that as well. But this is the method that gets, that gets called currently when I run the app and the user clicks on something. Um, and actually, you know, let's go ahead and, and, and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and do log.d. Uh, I need to report the logging class here. So I'll do that. Um, and then I'll do main activity. Um, and then I'll just log restaurant.id uh, because that's something else that's going to be important uh, for me in a sec. All right, so let's go ahead and run this in my emulator. And hopefully, uh, yeah, it's going to take a minute to start up. So, so this code, this is another callback method. We talked about the callback for the on query text change that was um, being called when the text in the search bar uh, was modified. This is a different callback that we registered with the list adapter library. And so when items in the list are clicked on, this callback is going to run. We're going to see that in a second, right? So I'm going to fire up my logcat window here, uh, let's look for main activity. Um, and now let's start, click, let's start clicking on things. Um, oh, uh -oh, hold on a sec. This is uh, more than I was interested in seeing. Okay, there we go. So you can start to see some of the events coming through. There's some other stuff that needed to happen. Okay, um, and you can see that what I'm seeing is the restaurant ID for the restaurant that was clicked on. And this is gonna be an important piece of information. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, launch this new restaurant activity. Now, the way that we do this, I'm going to take out the logging, and I'll shut down my emulator. Uh, the way that we do this, although this is a part of the project where you're probably going to want to use the emulator more, just to get a sense of what's happening, right? So you can see on the screen, like, is the does the activity get created or not? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say intent, uh, call this start restaurant, and I'm going to have to import this. Uh, this comes from Android.content start. A restaurant is equal to new intent and I need to pass a few things there's something called a package context I need to pass to the intent um, the new intent constructor so I can just use this um, and then I need to tell it what I want to happen I'm going to do restaurant activity dot class so essentially this is a reference to the class that contains the activity that I want to start once I have this now this on its own does not start the activity I have to make a call to start activity and pass it this intent. And you'll see that start activity is something that's um, available to me because I'm inherited from this app combat activity, right? So because I extended that, I have access to, to start activity. Okay, so let's see if, let's see what happens. Um, so I'm gonna run the app again. I've got my changes in here. So what I'm expecting to happen is when I click on the uh, restaurant in the list, that restaurant activity should start up. Now the restaurant activity doesn't do anything right now. Um, and that's fine. We're going to work on that as we go through uh, today's lesson. But let's just see if I can get it to start. Okay. And, and now you'll see I have a crash. Um, and, you know, I understand. Like this is one of the things that we're teaching you how to do, or at least giving you some experience with, 
is just dealing with these bigger, complex, uh, more complicated pieces of code than you might have normally uh, dealt with. And I, you know, based on what I see on the forum and stuff like that, I think you guys are getting the hang of this, which is really cool. Um, whenever you see a big error message like this, it's normal to feel a little bit intimidated. Like, what happened? My app crashed and it, you know, uh, spewed this big stack trace at me. Like, what am I supposed to do now? Um, but, you know, sometimes someone out there, some saint, you know, who's part of Google, um, has actually written some helpful information in this. So if you look all the way at the top, it says this activity not found exception. And then it says unable to find explicit activity class, blah, blah, blah. Have you declared this activity in your Android manifest.xml? Ah, interesting. This is a hint. Again, some kind person wrote this down because this is a common mistake. And so that's going to lead us in the direction of this next file we want to look at, which is Android manifest.xml. And in here, and again, you know, this is not something that we expect you to understand all of, but this is sort of metadata about your application. It tells Android like what the name is that gets shown in the, the menus and things like that. And one of the things you have to do if you create a new activity is you have to tell Android about it. You have to tell Android about that activity by adding an entry to this file. And so that's the next change we're going to have to make. We're going to say activity and then you'll see that it's going to bring up some completions here. Um, and you'll see this is like a short form. Uh, you'll see it's dot activities. And the, the reason is that it uses um, it uses the package name here as the prefix. So essentially it says, this is just a shorthand, right? It, I take that package name and I append this. And if we want, we can actually make this one look similar and it, it'll work fine, right? So now I have two activities that are declared in here. Now I don't need to declare any, say anything else about this. I can just close this tag. So now I have two activities that are declared in here. Um, one is main activity and the other is the, the restaurant activity. Um, so let's try this again. Let's hit run, see what happens. Um, see if we can avoid this, uh, you know, activity not found exception that we hit before. Um, and again, where we're going here is we want to get this to launch with just a blank screen. That's, that's our goal, right? Um, and now, boom, there it is. Awesome. Now let's, let's kind of convince ourselves what happens if I hit back, I should go back to the list. Awesome. Cool. So let's convince ourselves that this is actually working um, by going over here to restaurant activity and overriding on create. Now, this is actually something really, really, you have to be really careful with. Um, and I think it, no, okay, it did the right thing here, good. Um, it wants this to be final, which I'll do. There are two, this, this bit me recently, so I just wanna share it with you in case uh, this might happen to you. Um, there are two different overrides of on create um, and there's one of them, so if I look at my main activity down here, there's one of them that takes a, a bundle, right? Um, and that's the one that I want to, to use. And I'm gonna rename this, uh, refactor rename, unused, because we're not using that information. Um, there's another override about create that takes two parameters, and if you use the wrong one, what happens is it just never runs, and it can be very confusing. So this is the override that you want. Let's put some log information in here. Uh, just so that we have some sense of what's happening. And again, I'll have to import log, and I'm gonna use the tag restaurant activity, um, and I'll just say started, right? Um, okay, so we're gonna run this again. And, but now we know how to switch activities. So this is sort of equivalent of switching screens or switching, switching views uh, between uh, different activities in, 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 our, in our class, right? So I click this, and I need to change what I'm looking for here. And I still remain un unable to spell restaurant even after all this time. Okay, and you'll see that that ran. And if I go back and I hit this again, I should expect to see it again. Okay, so we've done the kind of the first preparatory step that we need to, to take in order to get things going for this part of MP2, which is that we've learned how to create a new activity. And, and we've actually, and it turns out, our, the place where we're creating the new activity is actually in the right spot too. I've, I've helped you out a little bit. This is what we want to happen. We want to happen, what we want to happen is when the user clicks on the activity in the list, we start a new activity with details about that restaurant. Now, there are some missing parts here and things for you to finish. We'll talk about those uh, toward the end of the lesson, but we're, we're off to a good start. We have the activity running, we have the onCreate method created, um, and now what we need to do is kind of fill in bits and pieces of that code um, you know, and now, now what you can do is you can actually start using main activity more as a model. But the next thing we're gonna do is we'll talk about layout. 
because now we actually need our activity to look like something uh, and it currently it looks blank. 